Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As I was meditating on today's Genesis text, I kept wondering if any of you have ever gone <clears throat> on a pilgrimage. And I was thinking about it and I realized that I don't know that I've even really ever been on a pilgrimage. I've traveled abroad to places, but I'm not sure that I've ever gone to a place be specifically because of the holiness that it held. And a pilgrimage is when you go to a place that has a deep spiritual meaning for you. It's a place that is holy and it is a place that will likely have a profound meaning in your life. Now, some examples of places where people could take a pilgrimage pre-pandemic include the Holy Land, which is where I would love to go someday, the Holy Land, walking in the steps of Jesus and his disciples, the things that were happening in our gospel stories. Walking the Camino de Santiago in Spain, made popular by a movie, um, probably about 10 years ago, very good movie. Don't remember the name, but I'll get it to you if you're interested. Going to the Teze community in France, where those hymns that we sing or those chants that we sing come out of a community in France there. My husband, John, has been to Teze in France. Or traveling through old cathedrals and churches in England, learning our Anglican history. People of the Muslim faith take a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lives. It's the holiest city for them. The birthright program here in the United States allows young Jewish people to take a trip to Israel to learn about their heritage. So a pilgrimage can mean different things for different people, but at the center of a pilgrimage is the desire to experience the holy in a new place. Today we hear the story of Jacob's dream with the ladder. Jacob's ladder that went up to heaven and there were angels ascending and descending. God's work is being done in this world and in the heavens. We hear of this connection between humanity and the divine with this ladder. In this moment in the dream, Jacob sees what has been called the hidden yet active presence of God. And I love that. That was said by an Old Testament scholar, Esther Men. Hidden yet active presence of God. Then the Lord blesses Jacob and his descendants with the same words that God uses with Abraham. And this holy moment was between God and Jacob at this time. And it was a holy moment for Jacob to remember that even though even though he is running away from his family, even though he stole his brother's birthright and blessing, even though he is a trickster, God is with him. God blesses him. God sees him as a beloved child of God. And for that, Jacob wants to mark this place as holy. And so what does he do to mark this place as holy? He uses the rock that was his pillow during this dream, and he makes an altar. And he made the place holy, he poured oil on it, and he called it Bethel, which means house of God. Now the verses right after our lectionary text ends, because it always cuts off way too short, the verses right after our lectionary text ends are Jacob's vow to return to this holy place because God will be faithful and Jacob will come back to the place that he marked. He is deciding that he will make a pilgrimage back to the house of God, Bethel. Now, going on a pilgrimage or having such a vivid dream as Jacob did are both very over-the-top experiences of the holy that maybe not all of us are going to experience in our lives. But God often reminds us 
that the divine presence is never far from us, right? God is always with us. God promises this to Jacob. And the psalm, my favorite psalm, the psalm points out how God is always intertwined with us. God knows our rising and our sitting, our resting places. God has been there with us since the beginning when we were being formed in our mother's womb. God is always with us. And that presence of God can be a comfort to us. And since God is always with us, that must mean then that the holy, holiness is always with us. And I wonder, how can we mark the holy in our lives? Where do we see the holy in our lives? Jacob marked his spot with a rock. Some people have small altars in their homes, just in their home. It can be a small little table with a candle and a cross and maybe some other meaningful items that you like to have near you when you pray. Having an altar in a little space in your home is a way to acknowledge the holy in your most comfortable space, right? It's a reminder that God is there. We have learned the hard way during this pandemic that God isn't only here in the church building. We love our church building for sure, but God still breathes and lives and moves even when we cannot gather together in this particular space. God's holiness is still present with us. Church isn't the building. Church is the people. Church is God's spirit moving in the world to make it a better place. We are the church. Up until March, we came to our own holy place, our own house of God, on a regular basis for prayer, word, and sacrament. We made a weekly pilgrimage to our own little Bethel, a place where we feel God's presence and we long to be able to do that again together as a community. We long for it, I know. But for now, may it be helpful for us to remember that God is with us in our homes. God is present outdoors in creation. God is present in our family members and our friends. God is there in the most mundane parts of our day. Maybe you can set up a small little altar in your home, a little prayer space for you and your loved ones. Maybe your altar is your garden or a particular place on your daily walk that you love. Where do you find the holiness of God? There's no right or wrong answer. God is with you and God is present in your life. Next time you feel God's holy presence, maybe you can take a rock like Jacob and mark the spot. Throughout the spring, people were putting stuffed animals in their windows or bright pictures, just a way of brightening people's days as they walked by when we were all more sheltering in place. And yesterday when we were doing our sale of some lobster rolls outside, we found a small little stuffed animal stuffed inside of a tree branch here at St. Matthew's. And it brought smiles to all of our faces. While that's not specifically marking the place as holy, that marker did bring us so much joy in that moment to just see a little stuffed animal in the tree. <laughs> Jacob found holiness, peace, blessing, and joy in his house of God, his Bethel. May we continue to find holiness, peace, blessing, and joy 
in the comfort of our homes. Thanks be to God. <laughs>